All right. Here we go, guys. We're going to go slow, as slow as I can possibly go. So these are called solids of revolution. It's the same concept as before. Same concept. Uh, what, Charles, what do you mean by same concept? We're integrating a common cross section, so an area cross section. Cool? So it says here, example one, solid the, re the region between the graph of y equals 2 plus x cosine x, so that's this guy, on the x-axis over the interval negative 2 to 2 is revolved about the x-axis to generate a solid. Find the volume of the solid. Okay. Pretend the x-axis is like a spindle, something you could rotate. So I'm going to put like a little arrow like that. Pretend it's three-dimensional. So if I could rotate that, this guy right here, that point would come out of the board and then into the board and then behind the board and then finally complete a revolution. Do you guys kind of see that? So like, like a circle. So for now, like where do you put the points? Let's see. This point's on negative 2, 3. So I'm going to go to negative 2, negative 3. I'm going to put a point there. Negative 1, 1 1.5. So that one. So negative 1, 1 1.5 like there. That looks like it's going right through 2. So negative 2. I'm just reflecting across the x-axis at the moment. 1 almost like 2.8. So negative, uh, sorry, 1, negative 2.8. And then finally, it looks like it's 2, 1. So I'm going to go to 2, negative 1. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first, I guess first I'm going to do this. Just reflect it, right? Looks pretty good. But here's what you're going to do with the edges. When you rotate it, here it is coming out of the board. And here it is going into the board. And really, I should probably put dashed lines on that one, right? Here it is coming out of the board, and here it is going into the board. Well, you know what? I'm just going to make them all solid. Who cares? In or out. What does it look like this forms? Perfect. It's a vase. Do you see that vase? Now, here we go. I need to find a common cross section. I either have to do it with dx's, either cut them up in x's or cut them up in y's. I can't cut them up in y's. Don't write this down. Just listen. If I do a, if I cut it in y, I cannot see what section that is or how that looks like. But I notice if I cut it up in the x, look, if I cut it like this, boom. What is that cross section? A circle. If I cut it right here, boom, do I still get that circle? So it looks like every time I cut it in the x, I get a circle. Does that make sense? What is volume of a circle? So here's my cross section. Sorry, area, area, area. What is area of a circle? Sorry, guys. Pi r squared. Pi r squared. Well, if I do this in terms of x, a of x equals pi, and then my radius is a distance from the center all the way to that curve, right? Well, the center is on the x-axis, and that curve happens to be 2 plus x cosine x. So pi 2 plus x cosine x, close it squared. Do you guys see that? Tell me, Gonzalez. Yes. Yes, you see the circle that I'm highlighting in uh, sky blue? The radius is a distance from the origin, which is the x-axis, all the way to that curve, right? That curve is y equals 2 plus x cosine x. If I give you any x value, you will be able to tell me what that radius is in terms of y, the y value. Isn't the y value just the distance from the x-axis to a point? So there it is. That's my radius. That makes sense? All right, here we go. This one, the volume, I'm going to integrate from where to where? Negative 2 to 2, so integral, negative 2 to 2 of pi, parenthesis, 2 plus x, cosine x, close it, squared, and then finish it with a dx. The most common way that it's written is written like this. Volume, pi on the outside, integral, negative 2 to 2, 2 plus x, cosine x, close it squared, dx, and then that's it. We just type it in our calculators. Take your calculator. Make sure it's in radian mode. Mine is in degrees, so let me put it in radian. And you know what? To BH, guys, I feel more comfortable if I type it in y. So I'm going to type it in y1. 2 plus x cosine x. 2 plus x 
cosine x because there's no way that you're going to make a mistake. You know what I mean? So there it is in y1. So then I just do this. I go to my home screen. I put pi in the front, math 9, uh, negative 2 to 2. Now I'm just going to type in alpha trace y1, put a square on it, and then dx. Oh, which reminds me, I got to talk to you guys about that. 52.428 or 429. That's what I got. Is that what you guys got? Yeah. All right. Out of the six free response questions that I've graded so far, six exams, two of you, and I don't know what two to be eight because it's just fresh out of my head. I'm just grading. I'm not looking at the names until I put it in my booklet. Two of you used calculator terminology and did like Y1 on question number one of the free response or Y2, one of the two. And you did integral, Y1, blah, 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 and you got the right answer. But Y1 is never defined in the problem and you lost like, okay, here's the deal. A right answer cannot be justified with incorrect work. So you cannot get the point for the right answer because nowhere in the text is there a Y1. This is calculator talk. Do not put Y1, Y2, Y3 on an AP exam, guys. It's not defined anywhere. Am I making myself clear, guys? So if, if they give a name like F or G, you can say integral of G of X, and that's perfectly fine if you don't want to write it. What's the safe route? Write the expression with the DX and then whatever the answer is. Cool or not cool? Do not use Y1. Do not use any of that type of stuff. Okay, what's up? I would I say you can say define what a is like a number I would try very I would not don't give it another name if it's already called g of x do not say g of x equals y1 uh, do I think it would work it might but you're flirting with whether or not you're gonna get the point that that is fine because uh, because the number is really long putting a letter to a number that's fine that's what I do. yeah that's that's the, that's a common habit ap does that habit also the habit that is not fine is if it already has a name don't call it something else uh and, or de definitely don't just write integral of y1 when there's no there's no y1 anywhere Is there more than one function in there that's y? If there's only one function that's a y, then maybe you're good. I would write out the, the whole thing, because I don't think you'll see that in the rubric. Okay. All right, here we go, guys. Question two, ready? Does anyone know what a washer is? I'm not talking about a washing machine. Yeah. So it says, before we even, well, I guess, that, yeah, let's, let's see what's up with this. Uh, the region in the first quadrant enclosed by the y-axis and the graph of y equals cosine x and y equals sine x is evolved about the x-axis to form a solid. Find its volume. Okay, so let's exaggerate quadrant one. Do you guys know how cosine looks like? Yeah, it starts at x equal. Let's do the sine one first. Let's do uh, sine goes through the origin. Let me choose a different color. And then cosine goes through x equals, uh, through y equals 1. So here's 1. So do you see it's just going to be this region right here in red? Okay. It kind of looks like a bird beak. Yeah. So if I were to erase this part and this, uh, yeah. It kind of looks like that, like a bird beak. And I'm rotating this about what? X-axis. So look, measure with your fingers. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to rotate it. That point here looks like it's going to be right there. And then this one's easy. This one is going to be right there. And then here's my X-axis. Oh, your goodness. I put another paper there. Okay. 
I didn't put a paper there. All right, here we go, guys. So here's how it's going to look. I'm going to reflect this aqua line. I'm just going to reflect it. So it's going to look like that. And then this burnt orange line is going to look like, actually it looks like it's probably the, yeah, that decimal looks like it should be further out. Let's see. Bam, and looks like it should be right here. There. It's not perfect, but look, Chav, I don't, I can't tell how it looks. Make a circular opening like this. Do you guys kind of see that? It's like a bowl. Let me erase those lines. It's probably easier to see this way. This part is empty. This part is empty. This is a bowl. This part is empty, guys. You put your hand in it. This is empty, and this has thickness. If we had density, if we had like uh, the material and we gave you the density, we could figure out like the center of balance and all that good stuff. Actually, the center of balance should probably be right. Bam. Yeah, it's a bowl that holds stuff, but it's, it's a weird looking bowl. <coughs> Do we kind of see that a little bit? All right, you will be able to see this one clearly. Check this out. Ready? I'm going to do it in this color. Look at this. No, no, not that color. Black. If I cut it right down, bam, look at this. What shape? Well, hold on, it's not a circle. Look at this. Do you see that? No? All right, let me make it more. Let me cut it more over here so that doesn't get in the way. I'm cutting it right here, guys. And then look at this. That's definitely a circle right there. And then look at this here in the middle. It's a circle. It's a washer. Yeah, the shape. It's a washer. Uh, in two dimensions, it looks like this. But in two dimensions, it's just flat. It's not a donut. Has. Do you see that or no? Yeah, draw it. I thought you were trying to say like you have a washer and all the time. Yeah, but I was like, at this edge, at the very edge, you don't have okay guys, focus, 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 focus. You have a washer everywhere except at the two extremes. You have a washer everywhere except at the two extremes. At this edge you have nothing. And at the other edge, you have a circle. You guys see that? But all, everything in between is a washer. As soon as you get out of the origin, it's a, it has a small hole, small hole, small hole, little, that little circle, open circle, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. By the time you get really, really close to the edge here where they both intersect, this hole is super huge. You guys see that? But it's always a washer. Always, always, always. Real quick, from geometry, how do I find area of a washer of that region yes we're going to use capital R for big R and little r for little r I've noticed that that is the best way where no one's confused all right so here we go I'm going to draw from the center to way over here to that edge I'm going to say that's capital R that's the big R from the center to the little guy so you see that little burnt orange that's little r. How do you find the area of a washer like this? Pi big R squared, that's the area of the big circle, minus pi little r squared, that's the area of the little circle. Does that make sense? So here's, hey, no, no, relax. It's not, it's not anything extreme. It's the same concept. So look, it's just geometry, guys. So here we go. A of x equals pi, my big R, 
the big R is the distance from the X axis all the way to the burnt orange curve. So I'll even color code it. What is that burnt orange curve there? Uh, cosine. cosine X. I'll put cosine X, close it squared, that's pi, pi big R squared, minus pi, and then the little R is in aqua blue or sky blue, so that's going to be what? Sine X, and then I, clo clo I close it and I put a what on it? Squared. There it is. This is what I am integrating. Pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. Because this gives me the area of one cross section. That cross section is everywhere between zero and wherever they intersect. You need a little bit of pre -cal, not extreme. Do we know where they intersect? At what x value? Uh, pi over 4. Pi over 4, good. Remember that at pi over 4, cosine and sine have the same value. Square root of 2 over 2. So here we go. Volume. Volume equals integral 0 to pi over 4. What else do I write? Yes, you can. You can factor out the pi. I'm going to leave it like this for now, and then I'll factor it out. Pi cosine x squared. You can also say cosine squared x minus pi sine x squared dx. Notice that you can factor out a pi, guys. So pi volume equals pi, usually on the outside. Integral, 0 to pi over 4. Uh, cosine squared x minus sine squared x. This actually you can do by hand if you remember. This is a Cal 2 problem, really. Uh, if you remember what cosine squared minus sine squared is from pre-cal. You guys remember? It's a double angle. You're close. No. No. Cos no. Take away. Uh, don't worry about it. Um. All right. Do you guys want to do it without without a calculator? Side note: cosine squared x minus sine squared x equals cosine two x. You guys don't remember that? Okay. No? Okay. Do you remember this? Side note, I'll put it up here in the top margins. Do you remember cosine A plus B? Well, cosine A plus B is cosine A cosine B minus sine A sine B, right? So cosine X plus X, which is 2X, is cosine X cosine X minus sine X sine X. So that is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So now you know that that is just cosine 2x. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So if you want it, this one is possible to do it by hand. 0 to pi over 4 cosine 2x dx, which equals, let's well, have root of a cosine 2x. Yeah, sine 2x, and then I put what in the front? Well, yeah, there is a pi there, but also a, a, a half, so pi over 2. Pi over 2, and I'm evaluating this from 0 to pi over 4. So sine of 0 is 0, so we just got the pi over 4. So pi over 2 times sine of, let's see, pi over 2. Oh, I'm just going to get pi over 2. 2 times pi over 4, 2 goes into 4 twice, right? If you would have done this without a calculator, you would have gotten the same answer, but in decimal. How are we feeling, guys? Yes. Well, I don't have any units right now, but uh, if they told you this was inches, then this would have been cubic inches. How do we feel? All right. Next question, it says, is the region enclosed by the y-axis the line y equals 2 and the curve y equals square root of x is revolved about the y-axis. The volume of the solid is given by the definite integral 0 to 2 pi y squared dy. I don't know. Let's figure it out. True, false. So sketch. So y equals 2 is up here. And y equals square root of x. I'm going to exaggerate it. 
and I'm rotating this about what axis? So there it is. I'm rotating it about the y axis. So now it's going to look like this, like a funnel, yeah. And yeah, it's actually a perfect funnel. It's a funnel. Not quite a cone. Not quite a cone because the edges are curved. All right, here we go. Volume. I know, oh, okay, this is a perfect opportunity. My common cross sections, you'll see. Can I cut this with respect to X or respect to Y? With respect to Y, perpendicular to the Y axis. Look, if I cut it like this, that's a circle all the time. So these are all dy's. Do we see that, guys? Because they're dy's, I need this in terms of x. So y equals square root of x squared squared. So x equals y squared. I need that. All right, here we go. Volume equals pi on the outside. Integral from what to what? These are dy's. From from zero to two, and I need my radius. The radius is the distance from the y-axis to that curve. The y we're doing with respect to y. So from the y-axis to that curve, this curve is y equals square root of x. But I don't want it in terms of x. I want it in terms of y. So I'm going to put in y squared, and I got to do what with that? Square it again, because it's radius squared. Do we understand that, guys? And then I put a dy. So is their answer true, or is their answer false? False, because it's not pi y squared. It's going to be pi y to the fourth. Do we understand that, guys? Don't worry, we're going to have more practice. This one's a calculator one, because there's answers in decimals. So you're going to need your calculator. Let R be the region in the first quadrant bounded by the graph 8 minus x to the 3 halves. Mm, how does that one look? The x-axis and the y-axis. Which of the following gives the best approximation of the volume solid generated R? It revolves about the x-axis. Okay, I haven't looked at it, guys. I do not know how it looks, but I have an idea. So I'm going to exaggerate quadrant 1 and 4. I'm going to say here's 8. And I'm going to say this has to look something like that. Chop, how do you know that? Well, I don't. I'm just going to, I'm just assuming. Uh, let me clear this. 8 minus x to the what again? 3 over 2. All right, let me see. Window 0 to 10, that's fine. Negative 5 to 10, okay. Okay, my window, I just squished it. 1, 2, 3, 4. It crosses at x equals 4. So here we go. Let me go back. Let me let me make it a little thicker. Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Corpus. I know attendance. Yeah, I'm going. Okay. She probably hates me. I'm going to go buy her some tacos. I'm just going to take attendance for every period, but now. I'm going to take attendance for every class. Did she do that? Yeah, of course. I know who's absent. It gives me a little red dot. It tells me. And I can change it later on, right? Then I'll count them up. Okay. All right. Here we go, guys. All right, focus, guys. Focus, focus. I'm rotating this about the x-axis, so now it's going to look like this. So all these cross-sections, I have to do they, I have to do a cross-section of dx. Chav, why? Because if I do it with dy, I don't have a common cross-section. 
But if I do it with dx, all of them are going to be circles, all of them. This is just a bowl, a solid bowl that is useless because it's filled in. But I guess it's a paperweight. Yes. Now, if I were to cross it with y's, no, because I'm rotating it. Uh, it'd be a weird circle, maybe. But I can't. It's not. It doesn't look like this. I don't think so. Let me see, because it's rotating in respect to x. So that one's the circle. Well, let's try it and see if we get the same 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 answer. So let's see if we get the same answer. So I know for a fact this one is a circle because I'm rotating in respect to the x. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah so this one for sure is a circle. All right. So here we go. And yeah, try with respect to the uh, y and see if we get the same answer. Uh, maybe we will. Volume equals <laughs> pi <laughs> integral. No, I'll do it. We'll do it right now just in case. Uh, pi integral from what to what? Um, do you remember? Zero to four. Zero to four. Uh, four is where it crosses the x-axis. And then the radius is the distance from the x-axis to that curve. So that curve is 8 minus x to the 3 halves close it squared dx. I would type that expression into y1. I wouldn't even mess with it. And then I would integrate it like that. So I would go, it's already in my y1, so here's my home screen. So second pi, math 9, 0 to 4, and alpha trace y1, and square it. Do not use that language on the AP exam, y1, make sure to put the whole thing in respect to x, enter, and I get 361.911. Is that answer in there? 361 point. I don't know why they just put one digit. This is must I must have gotten this question not from an AP exam. If we would have done it the other way, what happened? Well, it wouldn't take too long. Move the eight, divide by negative, and then raise it to the two thirds. We'll leave it. We'll leave it. Yeah, but we'll do it after the fact, after we're done. Okay. Look at this one. Example 5, let R be the region enclosed by the graph y equals x squared, the line y, x equals 4, and the x-axis. Okay, so let's see what that is. x squared, x equals 4, and the x-axis. So they're talking about this region. you got to be able to know what regions they're talking about, guys. Do we know how to figure that out? Okay, let's start again. Yes, they will. Like probably like this one. It'll be something simple that you can do by hand, like this one. All right, you guys ready? X squared, x equals four. That's a vertical line, and the x-axis. So that's this x-axis. So that means it's this region right here. You see how we did it, guys? All right. Which of the following gives the best approximation of the volume of the solid, gen solid generated when R revolved about the y-axis? So here I am, rotating about the y-axis. So it's going to look like, kind of like the other one last time. And then I have a big hole up here, a big opening. So there, can, so this does hold water, and here's my washer. Ah, oh, dang it! I said the answer already. Do you see the washer? You don't see the washer? I'll do it. I'll do it higher. Oh, it's not. It's not drawn perfect. So wait, the tiny circle, as you move up the curve, will get smaller. Do you see the washer now? Or I, I'm not the best drawer. Remember, I got a D in art. 
Yeah, in the college, this is my first line on the transcript. Do you kind of see it or no? It's it's in blue. Okay. It's in blue. Uh, it looks like this. And yeah, the space in the middle is open. It's this that is filled. It's good. you're gonna get a washer. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Is that washer a DX? Focus, Lopez. Is that washer a DX or a DY? It's a DY. Guys, look. It's it's perpendicular to the Y axis. It's a DY. It's not a DX. Are we are we clear? So I have to integrate with respect to Y. So here we go. By the way, this one is a no calculator question. So we're supposed to be able to do it without a calculator. So let's see if we can. So here we go, guys. I'm going to find out what that is. So if y equals x squared, that means that x equals the square root of y. Are we clear? All right, so now here we go. I'm going to write volume equals pi on the outside. Integrate. I'm integrating from 0 all the way to what? All the way to up here. It's not 4. It's not 8. 16. How do we figure that out? At this, correct. All right, guys, focus, focus, focus. This value way out here is 4, but we're not integrating in respect to x. We're integrating in respect to what? So this value way up here, it's not to scale, obviously. This value way up here is 16, because 4 squared is 16. Are we cool? All right. And now I need my distance, my radius. The radius is the distance from the y-axis to this. Well, first, okay, I take it back. It's a washer, right? So I need big R squared minus little r squared. The big R squared is always what? Four, always, no matter what. Do you guys see that? It, okay, you don't see it here. It's the distance from here, that black line, to this line. See that black line there? That number is always four. It never changes. Cool? Minus, now I need the distance from the y-axis to this curve here. What curve is that? Square root of y squared dy. Are we still, co still good, guys? Ask. The distance between the y-axis and that curve is square root of y. This, uh, this curve, yeah. That curve, uh, Gonzalez, was y equals x squared, right? Uh, okay, before we continue, I need to have this in terms of y, not x. So then I got to go square root, square root. x equals square root of y. See? So the distance between the y axis and this curve is the square root of y, and I put it in there, and that's little r, and I square it. Did that make sense? Okay. All right, guys, we're supposed to be able to do this one by hand. Let's see if we can. Pi on the outside. Bracket, antiderivative, 4 squared is 16, antiderivative of 16. 16y, yeah, minus, no, you're good, square root of y squared is just y, y so antiderivative is y squared over 2. So let's see if this, if we can figure this out. Pi, open parenthesis, we're just doing upper minus lower, so 16 is 0. So 16 times 16, I want to say that's 256. 256 minus 16 squared is 256 divided by 2, 128. 256 minus 128. So 128 pi. How are we guys? Were you okay? All right. Is this the last one? This is probably the hardest one. All right. Oh, I noticed, I noticed with the limit problems on the... Okay. I noticed that uh, we don't know how exponential functions look like, guys. Because uh, we had some exponential functions on the AP exam and the mock test. And we, I think the number was 2 to the power x or 2 to the power negative x. I can't remember. i got to look at it. But uh, so far, the ones I've graded, I haven't seen one correct. Um, so let's see. Do you know, without breaking a sweat, how y equals y equals e to the negative x looks like? Uh, 
It looks like that. Just plug in random numbers, guys. E is like two point something, and it's the negative x. So e to the negative fifty, it's a small number. E to the negative one hundred, it's an even smaller number. Like just think about it, because e to the negative means it goes down. One divided by a big number is a small number. All right, e to the positive x looks like that. And then x equals 1 is going to look like this. So notice it's like this fin. It looks like a fin to me, like a shark fin. It's that fin that is that the region that they want. So I'm going to fix this. I'm going to make it just with the fin. So here I am just erasing everything. I'm just going to put the fin in here. So here's my, yeah. There it is. Are we okay? Nothing crazy. It says that I am reflecting this or that I'm rotating this about what axis? The X. So here it is. Point, point. Point, point. Point. I'm just measuring with my fingers, guys. Point. So it looks like this. So not to be perfect, we're not looking for perfection. There it is, it looks pretty good, it looks pretty good. My common cross section, let's see. My common cross section has to look like that. There you can. Oh, I can't tell what it is. I just know that in the middle it's it's open. You can put your hand through there. It's like a a fashion something that goes in your wrist, fashionable. Yeah, some type of bracelet with peaks, peaks at the edge, maybe. You guys see that? Look, see that? It's my new bracelet. Yeah, it, it, this is empty, right? And this is filled with something. Looks like your new fancy bracelet. It's a washer everywhere you touch. That's where at the corners. At this end, you have nothing. Actually, no, at this end, you have a big one. In this end, you have nothing. Remember, this is filled in. Yeah, that's why the delta has a little part that is over Don't worry, I'm gonna, I, it takes a lot of time to create them by hand. I was trying to do it this morning, but it took me 20 minutes to do one. Uh, this is coming out of the board, it's coming in. This is, the side here is filled in, that's like my washer. You can see the washer though, right? Okay, and did you know that this is the empty side? Because this is what the reason that's shaded in. Why don't you know more or less? So not to be perfect. Okay, here we go, guys. It's a washer, pi big R squared minus pi little r squared. I'm just factoring out a pi. And I'm going to integrate from what to what? Zero to one. Here's zero and here's x equals one, guys. All right, focus, focus, focus. Zero to one. All right, the big R. All right, guys. The big R from the x axis to the top of that curve. What is this curve that is increasing? E to the x, close it, and what do I put on the outside? Squared, that's big R, minus the distance from the x axis to this curve that looks like it's decreasing. Close it, squared, and I put a what? DX. Let's look for that answer. Is it letter A? No, out. Is it letter B? Maybe. Why not? There's no pi, out. Is it letter C? No pi. Is it letter D? Looks like it is. Is it letter E? No. It's Every single one of them is squared, and they're trying to trick you like if it's just one giant radius squared. So the answer is D. All right. I have a question. Yes. So with numbers, with letters, what else? Can you factor out a what? Can you factor out a what again? Well, one's e to the x, the other one's e to the negative x. Well, they're not the same. 
uh, no, I mean the squares are the same, but you're not squaring the same thing. You can only factor out a square if they're both the same. Like 4x squared minus 4x squared, 4x minus 4x to the third, then you can factor out a squared, 4x squared. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. All right, guys. So I need to give you guys some details. So here we go. At this exact moment, at this exact moment, you know 98% of the calculus AP exam. The only thing you do not know is revolutions across a different axis between the y and the x-axis. What if I rotate around x equals 1? What if I rotate around y equals 3? That and special integrals. That's it. That's all, that's all you don't know. So 98% of the exam you know right now. So that means we're going to release... So here we go, guys. We're releasing this. UH test 2. Guys, guys, focus. Integration. And it's not due. Relax. Today's the 3rd. We're not going to make it due until the 14th. Oh, I love you, Thomas. You are literally... All right. Oh, you're not... Hold on. We're still got more. All right. Yeah, but don't worry. The rest are not... Yes. All right. Guys, focus, focus. Put this in your calendar. Take your calendars out. UH test 2 integration. When did it do? April 14th. April 14th. You got two weeks. All right. We are now ready. I'm going to give you guys three more, but relax. Hold on. Relax. You are now ready for the AB practice online exam. Part one and part two. There's two of them. Those, we want them at, until the end of the month, April, uh, where's my calendar? April, I don't want you guys to be all the way until the first, because you guys might have an AP exam the first. So we'll give you until April 28th on those. You haven't done those. What? Are you, yeah, you got a whole month. Those are the practice exams on UH. Yeah, it's called uh, AP practice exam, AB1, or something like that. All right, and one more, but don't worry, this is not as, as, as extreme as this one. You guys now can start doing the flashcards on Delta for review. I think they're called flashcards, literally. Oh yeah, you got you got twenty attempts for all three, okay, cool, cool. and you can come ask me not live, but you can come at especially for these the AB practice exams. You can come ask me after the fact. Wait, how many do you have for that? Twenty, twenty. No, uh, U UH, UH. No, not on those. Uh, no, there are multiple choice on this. Yeah, I'm about to. Okay, flashcards on Delta. It's a point system, guys. So we're going to say we want 100 attempts. And I know you got a lot, so we'll give you guys two weeks for 100 attempts, which is really nothing. But 100 attempts by 0414. You're going to see there's already people in the leaderboard. That's because we told the BC to do them earlier, so they're already in there. Don't worry about that. As soon as you get 100 points, you get on the leaderboard. Uh, by the way, in case you're wondering, uh, usually every since 2019, everyone has gotten on the leaderboard. So, yeah, it's not bad. It's not hard. Uh, but then after you get your 100 attempts, guys, we're going to want to, you know what? I'm not, I don't want to burden you with too much. 100 attempts by the 14th of April. And don't worry. All it is is they're going to ask you a question. You just got to answer it. That's an attempt. Charles, what if I get 100 attempts wrong? That's okay. You did 100 attempts. Just still 100. Yeah, for the, fla for the flashcards, yes. Are we clear, guys? All right, that's it. Just take care of Delta. There's practice right now. Yeah, but look, a lot of time. Uh, yes, I thought it was the other day, but I think I put it today, but I'll take it tomorrow. All right, guys, let's practice on Delta. Uh, revolutions about the axis.